good morning uh, good afternoon and good evening to all of you uh, well welcome to the webinar series about ws2 health care integration platform uh, in today's webinar we are focusing on integrating healthcare applications with emr systems databases and transform data using fire connectors okay uh, i'm melinda pereira uh, associate technical lead from wso2 healthcare integration team uh, let me introduce my colleague samir gunaratna senior software engineer also from ws2 healthcare integration team okay uh, first uh, this uh, this is the second webinar of the uh, webinar series about healthcare uh, previously nirmal did a webinar on uh, building an integrated healthcare platform with fire uh, which discuss about fire specification and uh, wso2 healthcare integration platform uh, deeply uh, we highly recommend uh, to watch uh, it if you are interested in fire healthcare in general or about uh, wso2 healthcare integration platform recordings of recordings and slides of this webinar will be shared within day or two uh, previous webinar recordings and slides also can be found in uh, on demand webinar section and our next webinar of this series will be in august uh, you will get update about that so if you have any questions uh, any time you can submit uh, in the questions tab uh, we will provide answers during and the uh, at the end of the webinar uh, also okay. Okay. let's see the uh, agenda of this webinar today uh, in today's webinar we focus on following areas uh, first we brief introduction to fire mainly to ensure no one is left behind uh, if you are not familiar about fire uh, then we discuss healthcare related systems and uh, data transformation needs and after that briefly discuss what is offered under ws2 healthcare integration platform and then uh, we talk about uh, fire accelerators and deep dive into fire data transformation connectors at last we are doing a demonstration on how to expose health plan and formulary data in existing database uh, as a fire api in implementation level and uh, demonstrate interoperability capabilities with open third-party application okay let's get started okay first uh, uh let's see what is fire uh, fire actually stands for uh, fast healthcare interoperability resources and uh, health uh, hl7 is the uh, organization that focus on uh, interoperability standards in healthcare domain since 1987 uh, if I elaborate more, they are providing comprehensive framework and related standards for exchange, integration, sharing, and retrieval of electronic health information that supports clinical practice and management, delivery, and evaluation of health services. At the moment, majority of healthcare organizations in United States use uh, HL7 version 2x uh, and a large number of countries have adopted and have implementations in operation. The latest uh, fire version, uh, R4 to be precise, uh, inherits all the best features that found in their previous specifications. It leverages latest web standards like XML, JSON, HTTP, OAuth, etc. Um, also supports RESTful architecture, enabling seamless uh, exchange of information using messaging 
structures or documents. And also specification is built focusing on implementation, allowing organizations to easily adapt to this standard. Uh, Fire is uh, built in modular component called uh, resource. All the entities in a typical uh, healthcare system like patient, claim, organization, etc., are represented as resources. And also, uh, FHIR allows uh, uh, extensibility. So, standard FHIR resources can be extended regional or governing bodies and can come up with extended profiles to cater their needs. This is just a very brief introduction and uh, we are deep diving into fire specification in our previous webinar. So if you are new to this context, uh, I highly recommend if you can refer it. Okay. So uh, now let's see uh, in what kind of situations data transformation requirements come into picture in healthcare related systems. So uh, when we consider healthcare industry, it consists of uh, providers, payers, vendors, suppliers, uh, pharmacy benefit managers, uh, and government also. And uh, to provide better uh, care, to patients and improve efficiency. Uh, almost all organizations in use health IT systems. Some use very popular EMRs like uh, Epic, CERN, and some use highly customized purpose build. Uh, in some cases, some use proprietary protocols as well. And some also use legacy systems like file-based systems as well. So recently, uh, there are initiatives in industry to share information among each other to provide better and efficient patient care. In some cases, governing bodies impose as rules. To keep it up, uh, those demands and play in competition, uh, organizations have to expose healthcare information via inter operable uh, APIs like FHIR. Exposing internal systems as standard APIs, organizations need to add new layers into their IT stack. First, they need an uh, integration layer. Uh, and uh, to access those data from existing system or source and transform them into standard format. On top of that, uh, they have to focus on API management, uh, managing the life cycle of the API that expose data, uh, maintaining relevant policies, imposing securities, and even monetization. So in such scenarios, uh, w, uh, organizations uh, take uh, to take head start uh, using uh, WSO2 healthcare integration platform. So now let's concentrate on the reference architecture of the healthcare integration platform. Okay, so uh, as you can see, uh, so uh, typical uh, healthcare organization uh, has different data sources. Uh, they have uh, wearable devices, they have also in place uh, EMR systems like EPIC, SANA, and they have data in uh, healthcare uh, databases, and they have their own APIs, internal services, and even some organizations use SaaS applications as well. So uh, to expose those data as a uh, fire standard, uh, standard uh, resources, uh, first, they need to access those uh, information. So uh, EMR connectors that we have in our healthcare integration platform and uh, 
uh, allows and other transport capabilities that we have allows uh, to access those information in existing systems and also can use uh, uh, data transformation connectors uh, to transform uh, those uh, information into standard fire format and also we can use uh, validators to validate against a given profile or a, a resource produced by the system or incoming resource to the system so uh, on top of that uh, we have we need uh, have a, a api management layer uh, which contains all the life cycle of the api management uh, which acts as a, a fire server and it also consists of uh, open id uh, certificate certified uh, key management capabilities and also developer portal so external developers can come and uh, register and use the apis exposed by the organization so uh, apart from that uh, the platform contains five api edition hub readily build uh, five open open api uh, definitions and uh, swagger 2.0 definitions so you can uh, use down uh, use those uh, definitions and create apis in the uh, platform and also it incorporates uh, analytics so you can have a uh, real time and uh, history based analytics information okay. so uh, now let's focus on uh, fire accelerators available in the uh, uh, healthcare integration platform so uh, these are actually uh, capabilities and features uh, that healthcare integration platform consists of specifically related to uh, fire on top of all general api management and integration capabilities those accelerators can be divided into three key, key areas based on functionality so api management category for focusing on api layer uh, data transformation capabilities uh, in integration layer and and the capability to connect with other systems so if we take one by one so uh, if we take uh, api management level uh, we have a uh, readily built uh, swagger 2.0 definitions and open api uh, 3.0 definitions for all the five resources and apis so, and uh, uh, you can uh, use those uh, api resources uh, definitions to create api in the api layers and also it contains an auto generated fire capability statement uh, so uh, for example let's say you have page you deploy a patient api in the uh, uh, api layer and it will automatically uh, identify that and generates the capability statement so capability statement is uh, like a, a, a resource that describes what is offered in this api so it uh, when you deploy a, a api in the system this the capability statement get automatically updated so uh, users the client applications can refer and get idea about what kind of uh, resources are supported by this API endpoint and also uh, in the API management level uh, we have open ID uh, capabilities with OAuth and uh, if we consider data transformation level uh, we have fire resource connectors uh, for all most all uh, fire resources and it's growing up also uh, and uh, so today in this uh, webinar we are totally focusing on that uh, mainly so uh, those fire connectors have capability of uh, validation 
connecting fire resources as well so uh, when considering connecting with other systems uh, we have CERN connector epic connector and you have we have capability to connect hl7 uh, servers and also uh, uh, capability to expose data bases as data services so those uh, capabilities are highly used for fire uh, api development So uh, based on, uh, okay, so let's uh, focus on uh, data transformation connectors. Uh, so uh, so uh, based on uh, our customers' feedbacks and working hand in hand with them, we noticed uh, that while they create fire resources and payloads, uh, they have to do extra work on retaining data in mediation flow like creating intermediate payloads using large and complex xslds with thousands of lines so uh, by feeling of, of that uh, we came up with a concept of building five resource object model as the mediation flow progresses with that users can inject data to fire resources at the time mediation flow retrieves them. So like set of functions in normal in programming languages. Uh, so developers does not need to write logic to retain and re uh, retained data in the mediation flow. So uh, you can see uh, this uh, in the diagram we have depicted the uh, concept here. So uh when you have the information you can create the fire resource and inject those information to the object model and uh, if you get some more information in another information source you can inject that also to the fire object model and after uh, uh populating uh, the uh five resource uh, up to a certain level users can uh, serialize it to wire level any wire level format uh, json and xml which are the standard uh, fire standard content types and uh, return back to the client okay. so uh, this is kind of an example on top of that concept so let's say uh, in your you are implementing the patient api uh in the mediation flow so first you retrieve patient data from some kind of a back end and uh, create the patient and uh so with initial data so then you realize that uh, the the telecom uh, information so the contact information about the user or the patient should be taken from another api so user contact api is invoked and then use add telecom operation to feed that uh, contact information to the patient resource and at the end uh, once you populate uh, relevant information in the uh, object model at the end you can use serialize operation and serialize it to back to y form so uh, this is the uh, fire connector stack and it's growing uh, so uh, so you can see at the bottom of this diagram uh, we have the fire base so it's the uh, common uh, connector uh, containing all uh, common operations that uh, we should uh, apply on the fire resources so likewise we have uh, Fire resource connectors uh, for international standard, and we have already built uh, for Darwin C pair data exchange formulary, and we have built uh, connectors for US Co and also carrying blue button. So this is a 
uh, growing this uh, stack and uh, so when new specification comes into play uh, we can quickly generate using our tools uh, so your users can uh, incorporate those connectors and build those apis okay so uh, if i go through the uh, operations of your uh, connectors that we have so there are a lot of connectors so if you select a specific connector for a particular resource it will contain a create operation so that is the like initialization of the uh, uh, object model like a new in uh, initializing a object in a java program language like create operation will create a five resource object and feed the uh, data that you have given in the uh, create operation and uh, maintain it in the message con message flow. and also it has set operations so uh, if uh, you need to uh, it actually depends on the cardinality of the uh, of that relevant element so if you refer the uh, fire specification uh you will see the cardinality next to each element so if the element is uh, with cardinality of 0 1 uh, you you will find a operation for that set that relevant set rel that uh, relevant uh, element name so for this example for matter status it has 0 1 cardinality so the operation name would be set marital status so similar to that uh, add operation is also there uh, also there for uh, uh, for multiple cardinality elements so in this case uh, as shown in the diagram uh, identifier is a zero more element so uh, we have add identifier so uh, you so with that you can intuitively identify uh, operations that we have in the connector so you don't need to every time uh, uh, refer our wsf documentations and all that you can when you can see you can see the uh, fire spec and uh, intuitively get to know that this is the operation you have to use so uh, each operation uh, has parameters so you have so parameters are used to feed the data uh, into the connect operation so uh, so the so the connector parameters are also uh, derived from uh, fire path so mainly fire path is also uh, defined in the uh, specification so uh, if you see in the this diagram uh, if you are populating the value of a telecom of the contact so contact uh, dot telecom dot value will be the uh, parameter for that uh, uh, element so in the right side you can see an example uh, so how it get populated to the uh, in the XML uh, representation. Okay, so uh, likewise, uh, you can uh, populate data uh, as the mediation go flow progresses. Okay, so uh, so let's see uh, the fire data transformation connector in action. So. Uh, so in this demonstration we implement formulary service for my health plan application so uh, the my health plan application is a third party application by uh, developed by mita corporation and so here we are demonstrating uh, the interoperability that has in the uh, file so here we are implementing the Darwin C pair data exchange 
formulary API. So if we consider the uh, My Health Plan application, uh, there are two main use cases. Uh, it look up for medication information, and also it look up for coverage plans uh, exposed by the payer formulary service. So uh, if we pick uh, one of these two, uh, one of uh, use case uh, in this application so the client uh, user comes to that application and gives the rx known code and the uh, health plan application sends it to the invokes the uh, fire medication knowledge api and the fire medication knowledge api that i implemented using the uh, Healthcare integration platform invokes a data service, and the data service uh, makes the query to the database and result, takes the results back and prepare the payload and send back to the med, uh, API medication knowledge API implementation. And it uses the uh, fire data transformation connectors and build the fire resource and respond back to the uh, my health plan application and it renders those information drug information to the user so uh, next uh, section will take over by samira so thank you melinda so uh, i'm going to uh, uh, explain about this use case so uh, in this use case we are trying to expose an existing data source, source as an uh, standard uh, fire drug formula server using WC2 health healthcare uh, integration platform. So in this uh, use case, we have basically an existing uh, data source with drug information, and uh, we have a client called uh, the My Health Plan uh, client, which is uh, implemented by the MITRE Corporation, and it is publicly available uh, to client for accessing uh, drug formulary services. So basically, uh, 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 here uh, we have uh, the the data source that we have uh, uh, we need to expose using a WC2 integration platform so in the middle uh, we have the WC2 healthcare uh, platform which consists of the api layer uh, which is facing the client and uh, it has uh, two apis uh, uh, implemented uh, to uh, implement the formula drug uh, specification uh, and uh, the integration layer is uh, responsible for data transformation uh, which are required to construct uh, the necessary uh, fire resources uh, uh, for the uh, drug formulary specification so uh, in this slide we can see the the internal data source uh, we have uh, we, we are uh, going to uh, expose uh, uh, use, using our WSO2 uh, integra uh, healthcare integration platform. So we have uh, uh, five uh, data services uh, that are uh, basically uh, send, uh, responding uh, XML uh, responses. And uh, we are going to uh, map the data to uh, the formerly uh, fire resources using our uh, data transformation connectors so uh, here we have a single uh, uh, fire uh, formulary uh, response from available backend service so as you can see uh, we can map the corresponding fields uh, to the standard uh, formulary uh, uh, drug fire uh, resource uh, so uh, the formulary drug uh, fire resource is extended from the medication knowledge uh, a fire resource so as you can see uh, the several ex extensions are they are uh, included uh, to uh, extend the medication knowledge uh, profile to implement the the uh, formulary drug uh, fire resource so here uh, when mapping existing uh, response field uh, we might need to uh, do uh, few uh, type conversions as well so as you can see uh, 
in the sotrik field that is uh, that is coming from the existing backend we need to uh, map it to a boolean value uh, which is a uh, so basically we have to do a numeric to a boolean uh, value within our integration flow uh, so uh, let's uh, look at uh, the uh, how to uh, do this uh, transformation using uh, our data uh, our connectors and uh, our already available uh, mediation functionalities uh, within the integration uh, platform we are going to play a video that demonstrates a sample healthcare integration flow developed using ws2 integration studio in this demonstration we are going to develop integration flow to expose an existing backend api to a standard fire drug formula api so let's move on to the demo video this is the response coming from the existing system and we are going to use our fire data mapping connectors to create formula drug resource according to the fire resource specification we are using wc2 integration studio to implement the integration logic to start we are creating an integration project and let's name it as formula drug and let's uh, click finish to create the project here we see the project has been created and our integration logic is in, uh, going inside this config project we are going to implement an api to expose formula drug resource and here we can see the option to create api using the swagger definition we are providing the swagger for the formula drug resource which is generated from w0 healthcare tools you can see the generated swagger like this we are providing the swagger now uh, to create the api As you can see, the API boilerplate has been created from the Swagger. If you go to the source view, you can see the standard context of the fire resource. And uh, what we are going to implement is the API to get the drug formula by ID. Now we are going to remove the boilerplate components from the integration flow. And then uh, we are going to call our backend to get the response to the integration flow. So this is our backend endpoint and we are going to call it using the call mediator. Uh, since we are calling the REST backend, uh, we need to use an HTTP endpoint and uh, we are giving the endpoint URL in the uh, URI template field and uh, we are providing the ID parameter as a path parameter uh, with this syntax. As you can see, we need to pass the accept header to the backend in order to get a JSON response. Uh, we can use the header mediator to construct the accept transport header. Uh, we can configure the header name as accept uh, and the value as the application JSON. So we need to set the scope uh, to transport to make it the transport header. Now we can look to map the backend response to fire resource using our data mapping connector. In order to do that, uh, we need to add the connectors to the workspace. Uh, so we can right click on the project and choose the relevant connectors uh, from uh, the store or from your file system. Uh, we need both the formula drug connector and the fire base connector. Now we are adding the connectors, the both connectors has been added. Uh, now you can see the connectors are added and you can see the available operations as we expand uh, this uh, palette. Uh, and the, we have the create operation and the dedicated and then uh, supported uh, set operations for each field. First, we are going to use the create operation and we can see all the fields that are available for the resource. 
so all the resource fees defined in the resource specification are included in the uh, create operation so these are the all the fields that can be found in the specification first we are going to map the id field using corresponding json path uh, here we can see the id field and uh, we can uh, provide json path uh, here to map the value from the backend response We are using the inbuilt function called json eval and uh, we pass the correct json path to that function so that corresponding json path uh, would look like uh, this after creating so uh, we can give the json path like this now we have mapped the id field Although in this scenario we can map all the fields using create operation, we are using uh, set and add operations to demonstrate some purpose. Now we are going to map the second field or require to the corresponding field uh, prior authorization uh, boolean extension. Let's use the set prior uh, authorization uh, operation from the operation palette. We can drag and drop it to the integration flow since this uh, resource uh, field accept a boolean value we need to do a type conversion logic uh, since we are originally getting a numeric value uh, from the backend response so in order to do that uh, we can write a common function inside the mediation flow uh, so using uh, in templates let's create a template name it as uh, convert to boolean basically we are passing a numeric value to this template to get the corresponding boolean value here we need to uh, write a if logic to uh, based on the value passed uh, and we can use the property to uh, set the corresponding boolean value here we are evaluating the pass value using uh, the notation called dollar func and we are checking if it's one uh, we are going to set a property to correspond the boolean value to true here we are giving the property name uh, and the value uh, uh, as true So for the success scenario, we set the value as true and for the uh, failure scenario, uh, we are setting the value as false uh, in, for the S logic. You can see the source view like this for the template function and then we need to uh, call this template from our API integration flow. Uh, we can use the call template mediator for that we need to select the corresponding template and uh, we need to pass the parameter called value uh, and its actual value uh, that can be mapped from the response we are going to insert the corresponding json path for auth required field to pass to the template and now uh, uh, we have done the type conversion we can move on to mapping uh, the other variable fields uh, then we have another two extension fields to map as same as the auth require field which is step therapy require and the content limit uh, we have corresponding set therapy limit and set content limit correct operation to uh, map those values As per the timing, we have pre-built uh, the syntax uh, for those two fields. Since it's similar to the auth require field, we are going to copy and paste this logic into the integration flow. Now we are uh, pasting the integration logic. And you can see the graphical layer, it has added two more uh, extensions. 
Previously, uh, we missed uh, to map uh, Boolean value property to the prior authorization field, and now we are going to map it. We can evaluate the property value using, using the dollar CTX notation uh, and followed by the property name. So the dollar context refers to the message context uh, within the integration flow. Now we are going to map the drug tier field from the response. So the corresponding resource field is the drug tier ID extension. So we can use the set drug tier ID operation from our connect operations. This is a drug tier ID extension is type of codable concept. Uh, from our operation, it's enough to provide the code value and it will automatically populate the display value and the, uh, the system uh, value. Uh, here we need to provide the corresponding JSON path to evaluate the drug tier code. Now we have to map the Rx norm code from the response uh, to the formula drug uh, file resource. We have the drug code, drug name as well as the response. So it's also a codable concept type as per the file specification. We have set code operation from the connector that can be used to map those values. We can provide the code display name uh, and the system values uh, to the operation uh, from, the, from this response. We can provide corresponding JSON path value to map the code uh, display and the system values, uh, as we can see here. Then uh, uh, let's uh, configure the uh, display value from the value taken from the drug, drug Rx name field from the response. Then also uh, we can set the code system value uh, taken from the drug Rx uh, system uh, ref field. So this is the JSON uh, path for that. Then we can configure the plan ID extension value. Uh, for, uh, for that, uh, we have the set plan ID connect operation. We can give the corresponding JSON path to extract the response data. Now we have mapped all the fields uh, from the backend response to the standard formula drug uh, file resource. And now we can uh, serialize the resource to decide the uh, wire format to the client request. So in order to do that, we have used the serialize operation. And uh, here we can configure the target content type that the client needs. Also, we can uh, configure this to work with the accept header as well. In this demo, we are providing the application JSON as the uh, content type. Uh, now we have constructed a response, so we can use the respond mediator to respond back into the client. Now we have uh, finished the integration flow. Uh, we can save uh, and uh, run it inside using the integration runtime. So before we uh, run uh, we need to deploy we need to uh, pack the relevant connectors uh, to to be deployed in the integration server now we can run uh, export and export the developed artifacts uh, and the connectors uh, and we can uh, click finish to run the uh, server so we can see the service starting up uh, and after successful deployment of the API, you will see it in the deployed API section that will pop up.
and you will see the endpoint uh, that you need to invoke. So you can use any HTTP client to invoke that. So we are using Postman. When sending the request to the uh, API, we will get the standard fire response as this. You will see all the extension and other fields are populated accordingly. Now let's look at uh, the help plan application, the formula drug service that we have uh, drug service or server that we have implemented, and let's uh, try it on the my help plan app. So this is the uh, endpoint of our server. So now we are connecting to our uh, implemented uh, formulary server. Yeah, so uh, uh, it has now uh, responded uh, with the uh, available uh, coverage plans and also the available uh, formula drugs. So uh, these are the, uh, the, the available uh, the formula server responses uh, that we have implemented. So uh, if you go inside the formula drug, we will see the uh details of the drugs as well uh, also we are able to uh, uh, look up for the uh, the drugs uh, you using this client so uh like i said so this is the uh, this is this is our in, uh, uh, way to uh, uh, demonstrate the, uh, the interoperability uh, uh, of using a WSU2 uh, healthcare integration platform. Uh, so, uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, now is the time you can uh, pass your questions. So uh, while we are going through the webinar uh, presentation, so uh, our uh, there is a separate panelist uh, panel uh, of uh, healthcare experts uh, were also supporting us. So uh, I think most of the questions they may have uh, uh, replied back. So um, let's see. Okay, so uh, someone, uh, yeah, asking uh, how they can use uh, validate validate uh, the fire resources. So uh, validation uh, is kind of uh, uh, you can. There are two uh, methods you can use. Uh, there are uh, you can validate uh, incoming uh, fire resource to the api and also using validate operation and also you can uh, uh, validate the fire resources built from the uh, uh, built from the uh, fire uh, your api implementation before responding back to the client so likewise uh, uh, you can uh, 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 validate at uh, incoming request and as well as uh, outgoing resource uh, against a defined uh, profile. So I believe uh, most of the questions uh, the panel has uh, answered back and also so it's like uh, Coming into the end of the uh, time slot we have, uh, so uh, so uh, so if you have uh, any questions, uh, you can reach us. Uh, so reach our uh, healthcare uh, website and 
you can also uh, schedule a demonstration and have a face to face uh, uh, conversation with you and uh, and also uh, also uh, you can go through the uh, previous webinar uh, as well so if you are interested in uh, or if you missed that webinar and if you are interested of uh, mainly for fire and healthcare in general uh, please refer the uh, the first webinar of this webinar series so uh, i think uh, we can wrap up uh, this webinar and thank you for joining us uh, this webinar and uh, have a good day